Welcome back to the Sawdust Factory. Today's episode we be turning a bowl out of a burl. Co-worker. It is honey locust. Um, it's got a little bit of dirt on it. He says it's been sitting in his barn for quite some time. It's got some chainsaw marks, but it appears to be dried out. Um, actually, when I cut it, it was a little wet probably inside. I know it's honey locust because of the strip of bark right here. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell. I'll make this easy on myself and first mark out a circle. That way we're not turning off a, a bunch of air on the lathe. I think I got about a 8 or 10 inch blank out of this piece. I set it up on my bandsaw to cut the back off for a nice flat. I could lay on the bandsaw table and go around. Otherwise you're laying it on the rim of the bowl and trying to figure out where a circle is on an uneven surface. Blade on the saw is pretty dull at this point in time. It needs to be changed, but it made it through. Like I said, the wood was a little wetter inside than I expected. And I was a little bit concerned about some of the bark inclusions that you can kind of see there on the edge, but it turned out to be okay. Didn't amount to much. I'm going to be turning this using a, a worm screw. I go to this method a lot for uh, turning bowls. Starting with a worm screw, attached its face, mounted up. And then we'll cut a tenon on the bottom and flip it around to hollow it out. Make sure we got a snug fit. Get the laves space ready. Did use a tailstock starting out because it was a little, little uneven. Make an initial cut at the rim of the bowl. I don't usually do that, um, or where the rim will be. But I wanted to see how the material would cut. I don't get a lot of chance to turn burls. I was kind of curious to see what the finish would look like on it. And I couldn't really tell much at, the, at that point, but it seemed like it was cutting okay. So I decided to move on down to the uh, base of the bowl, start shaping it out. I was really going for a solid bowl with um, no bark inclusions or anything like that. Taking some pretty big cuts there uh, with the gouge. Probably bigger than I should have. And once we get it to a certain diameter, we can start to do more bevel cuts and controlled manner. This is the normal rate. Everything else is sped up to give you an idea of what a cut looks like. You see here I still have the bark, a lot of the bark still showing at the bottom and that chainsaw mark at the top. So I'm gonna that up. I have to decrease the height of the bowl pretty drastically to get rid of that. Doing some pool cuts here, some face cuts to knock down that extra material. There you can see I still have a big bark inclusion I gotta take care of.
getting to the point now where I can do more bevel cuts. Still doing a little bit of pull cutting along here, not riding the bevel there. Just to get rid of that bark inclusion. Now I start to drive out the form of the bowl. Here I'm marking the tenon size for the bottom. And I use a parting tool to create that tenon shape. Trying to get the outside profile of the bowl just right at this point in time. I don't really want to do any additional work on it after I flip it over. After I flip it around um, to hollow it out, because it's kind of up against the head of the lathe and it's a little bit more difficult to access. Doing some shear scraping, and you can kind of see about an inch and a half, two inches back from the rim right there. Still have kind of a ridge, and I'll, I'll notice that here in a second and try and remove it. A you know, bevel cut there to try and get rid of that ridge. There's still a slight one there I can tell in the video. Now I'm checking my rim to make sure I, I have a continuous rim and there I just got a catch and ran back across the face of the bowl so Taking off some additional material to get rid of that mark. And I reproduced that ridge again doing that, so I went back and took that away. And I'm cutting on the rim again, and I decided that was a bad way to cut that with the tool. So I backed off and came back to a bevel cut. You can see the shavings coming off of that, and they're very fine. Now I'm happy with the outside of the bowl. I only have one small bark inclusion, which goes pretty deep, so I'm going to ignore that. Actually, there might have been two of them at this point. I have it turned around now, and we'll remove the worm screw. I start on the top of the bowl with some pool cuts. Just to remove the uneven material. That surface was relatively flat to start with, so immediately went into push cuts here, riding the bevel. Now we'll start hollowing it out. Chips coming off of here were pretty pretty aggressive on my hand, so not able to put my hand on the top of the bull gouge, having to resort to putting it underneath. So you don't really get as much control, but keeps you from getting beat up by the chips. to hollow out here and once I get down to a certain level I'll go back and establish 
what the thickness of the bowl is going to be. And I'll pretty much hold it, hold it there and complete the rest of it. I believe I do one more pass here from rim down to that point to establish a final thickness. Uh, maybe not. I'm going to measure now and make sure that a consistent thickness all the way through there. Looks like I was happy with that result, so now I'm moving on to taking more material out. always try and leave a lot of material in the base of the bowl as I'm approaching the final thickness. It, it makes it more structurally stable, reduces a lot of vibration, and then it's a kind of a matter of slowly turning down the outside thickness to get where you want. Just keep creeping away at it in one to two inch sections. So here I'm focusing on this next little bit of the rim to get it down to the right thickness, but not taking that cut all the way to the base. I only cut away at the base like what I need to. And then I come back and remove more of that mass so that I can effectively get the gouge in there and continue to reduce the wall thickness down on the next lower portion. Again checking and understanding where does the where does the wall get thick again. And sometimes when I make a mistake I'll find I've made it too thin and kinda have to balance that out by either going back and adjusting the rest of the wall or just living with it. It's my technique on the inside of the bowl when I'm using this particular gouge is to start the cut really high. Kind of you can tell you can see how the, how high the tool is from the center line. And I'll I'll ride it down as I approach the center of the bowl. And that helps keep me from developing an, an indentation in the bottom of the bowl. I find that if I, if I ride just straight across the center line towards the middle, I'll create a undercut or indentation at the bottom of the bowl, which is kind of undesirable. I want the bottom of the bowl to be flat inside of it. on to sanding and I won't show you all of this but I do power sand this. Uh, I think I started at about 100 grit. And we'll go through all the grits um, down to about 240 or so, 220 I guess, 220 um, with the with a drill sanding and then I do the rest by hand down to about a 600. Now I'm putting in a plank of wood here so I can put the inside of the bowl against that. And I've got it registered back up to remove the tenon here. You can see the bowl went on just right, just centered up because I left that registration mark on the bottom. And obviously it hasn't done any moving since I put it on the lathe because it's relatively stable. It's kind of like the, the perfect moisture content, to tell you the truth. I, I wasn't Worried about the bowl cracking, um, but I knew I could I could finish it. I could finish it out, and it wasn't like I was cutting super dry wood. You can kind of see the, the shavings show that it's got a, a little bit of a moisture content still in it. Switch tools now so I can get down as close as possible. And there I'm just checking to make sure I've actually got a cavity on the base and I'm not gonna have anything I'm just gonna have a complete circle sort of touching the surface that the bowl is gonna sit on and I'm making a couple marks on here to guide me when I label it come back and stain that little foot and then it's done on the lathe you can see there the grain structure on this piece is really nice. Try to be 
careful to not hit it with the live center. Now I'll take off the tenon um, with a chisel. That's usually how I do it. And then we'll apply some finish. Fortunately, you're not going to get to see the finish applied because that's when the camera died. But here's some nice shots of the end result of the bowl. Turned out really nice. Again, this is a honey locust out of a burl. The coloring turned out really good. Grain structure was beautiful. Just a couple bark inclusions give it a little bit of character. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the the video today. Maybe inspired you to get back out on the lathe, do a little bit of turning. Here's the side of the bowl. It's a nice height, nice proportion. It turned out really good. Thank you for watching, and check out the channel for more wood turning videos.